The first time I met Lester and talked to him, it changed my worldview considerably. And I've never really been able to look at the campaign work that I do or, uh, you know, much else about philosophy or uh, living philosophy the same way quite ever again. It's like my view of reality could actually be the real view of reality. It's just a, a paradigm shift that I wasn't expecting. And uh, I hope that you have the same experience because it was, uh, it's been very liberating for me. And uh, I'd like to introduce my friend Lester. He's gonna talk to you about tribal law and the first law of the land. Everybody here is a descendant of a tribe that makes up the six Aboriginal treaties that is the foundation of all international law, including today. To begin with, I'm going to name those six treaties. Now, you won't find them in your university library. So here they are. American Indian tribes were known as the Americus Empire. Now, here's the treaties. And we're not talking about the recent one to ten that stole this country. We're talking about treaties before Columbus that we have with the rest of the world. Canes of authority, wampum belts, and peace pipe treaties. There's three. All Asians and minor Asians were under the Palladium of Troy Treaty. Palladium of Troy Treaty. All blacks, Arabs, and Israelites were under the Seal of Solomon Treaty. All Saxon, Anglia, Mercia, Northumbrian groups, Cleopatria tribes, or the white tribes of Europe, were covered under Noah's Ark Treaty. Remember now, Noah's Ark is not a boat, per se. It's a treaty. So, those are the six treaties. Now, here's the law. Every civilized nation, civilized, dwell on that word for a while. Every civilized nation in the world is governed by these six Aboriginal treaties that make up all international law. Hence, from them come the law of nations, which has clan mothers who hold territorial rights. In order to be part of these treaties, you would have to belong to a tribal unit that was ruled by the Casas Romesis, which is known in international law as clan mothers, or the women. So the women were the law. And to, for, with some of us, this is the truth. When you put back a tribal government, you have to look at who it is that selects anyone to speak on behalf of the representative of a territory upon this earth. And it must be a man, but that man must be appointed by, as they say in Europe and in international law, it must be done by the Casas Omesis. She must appoint the man. Otherwise, it's not, it's not acceptable in international law. Today, Indians have a lot of trouble because they no longer know who they are. Now, that's, that's not an attack on my people or my ancestors. That's the truth. Where we have references that show clearly that the law is abided by to this very day, but it's kept quiet. You'll never hear about it spoken openly. They even made treaties, secular treaties in the past for the purpose of keeping, keeping it all quiet. I'm going to begin to explain to you what the power of the woman is, still is to this very day. What I said on behalf of those few tribals that I brought up since 1994, I said to the United Nations, where we are registered, I sent them a command. I didn't say, please, will you guys straighten out, quit making war, killing babies, raping women? No, I sent a command, because it's my responsibility, and I was told to do so by the women of the clans. 
And one of the statements is quite simple. As descendants of signatory tribes, we are commanding all civilized nations to cease and desist from supporting the use of weapons of war and destruction, police action, and mind control. Because they're violating international law. You have to know who you are to say it. Because that statement kept, kept me alive and it keeps me alive. So you have the foundation right there. In other words, that's what governs these civilized nations. Just how did we lose that kind of power as a people? And I'm not just saying as a descendant of Indian people who comprise a tribe here, I beat all of you. So let's begin with Europe. Let's start with Europe. Let's have a look at what happened in the past that really dehumanized, despiritualized, and changed the people's mind about who they were. And I'm not asking anybody to believe anything. Ah, I'm asking you to know. There's a document here that says, move the spirit. Now, if this don't move your spirit, I don't know what will. So I'm going to go over it quickly. Even if many will say, what has religion got to do with past history? Well, it can be tied to every past, present, and his historical event. From the death of Julius Caesar to the present celebration of Columbus Day. Religion caused the signing of a treaty and the killing of thousands of innocent people called the Inquisition. All because of Christian religious rituals found in the original translation of the Bible that was left out or omitted in the new translation. The changeover can be concluded as a change in the relig religious tactics for its followers. Christians of the past, they kept peace on earth by using the forces of nature to make nations and countries behave. New Christians of today, using the new translation, they use forces of implements of war and destruction, police action, and mind control to make countries and people behave. Don't get the wrong impression. I'm all for religion, you know? But it's the new translation that you should be questioning and having a look at. See, there's a difference you know, using nature to do your work and carrying a big gun. Quite a difference, isn't there? To anyone calling on nature to do the work, I'm for it. Mind your own business, you don't get hurt. But if you point a gun or use police action or mind control, when well, I'm legally right. What these, what these alleged Christians have no idea to or have no knowledge of is that the Christian Bible has gone through two different time dispensations after which it got a new translation. Plus, there's a religious organization that does Prayer of Atlantis. Every day at a given time. The reason they do it, so that the Time Walkers Society among Indian nations will never rise again. Time Walkers are found in the original Bible or law. Let's get something straight here about nations. I don't care if your religion is devil worship. Your laws come from your religion or your religious philosophy. Otherwise, you're not accepted as a country. Every full moon, another religious organization sings a song called Pandora's Jar of Plagues, or changed to the Song of St. John the Divine. Doesn't that sound wonderful? The reason they do it, is so that the Song of Creation which every tribe used to know, and they're part of the world, will never be done again on Indian reservations or in Indian country. The Song of Creation is part of the original Bible. <clears throat> now, the King James Version, which all religions follow, was retranslated by the Buddhist scholars in the 1500s for the one that was first printed 451 A.D. So if you can find one of them, you'll find in 451 A.D., one of those Bibles, you'll find Daughters of the Great Spirit the law of the land. In London, England, in a British Museum of Archaeology finds sits the Septuagint Bible, which is supposed to be the oldest Bible a white man 